This is Pass Part 2. Good morning and happy Easter to you. Beginning this Sunday morning in St. Mary Parish, where one family had lost everything after a house fire incinerated their home. News 10's Dawson D'Amico spoke with the family as they looked to get past this tragic loss. It was a regular Tuesday for Lacey Broussard. She got off of class, got home and started cutting her grass. And then her life turned completely upside down when she noticed flames coming from inside of her home. I walked in my back door and there's a flame coming out my wall. Um, I started hollering for my daughter because there was smoke and she's 14. I couldn't um, find her. I started throwing water, you know, to try to put up the fire and I'm <laughs> It was just horrible before you knew it. The whole house was engulfed. My daughter was saved. She was outside. These are photos of what the inside of the house looked like before the fire. And here are photos after the fire was put out. Broussard says it began inside the guest bedroom and spread throughout the entire structure. While fire officials worked to determine the cause of the fire, the entire family is devastated from what has taken place. You don't ever think something like that would happen to you because it changes literally everything. Julie Broussard is Lacey's mother who came to her daughter's aid when she needed help the most. I just support her and, and, and uh, be with them, whatever they need. If they need me to come and help and clean, I'll come, you know. If they need whatever she needs, you know. Lacey gives advice to people and is reaching out for help from anyone willing to support. Sleep with your bedroom doors closed. Close them because if fire starts, you will be saved. You can jump out of a window. Fire will not spread. Please do that. Secondly, if you can help with anything, I'm not a proud person. Please help me. I need help right now. It's hard. In St. Mary Parish, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY, News 10. Some great advice there. Sleeping with your bedroom door closed. Broussard says she hopes to start a GoFundMe to help with repairs. Then another fire in St. Mary Parish has the entire Franklin community devastated after a fire destroyed a historic restaurant and lounge. According to the mayor, Joe's Restaurant and Lounge, a staple in Franklin, caught fire Friday afternoon. He says the flame started around one uh, and started around one of the ice makers. That is this business also owned by the mayor's family would be celebrating 73 years this upcoming July. The mayor there telling us the restaurant once served as a place of refuge for civil rights activists. You know, it's very historical uh, landmark for a great deal of people in this community. So we very heartbroken, but God is still in control and no one was hurt, no one was injured. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that uh, when it did happen, no one was in here. And, you know, I'm thankful we didn't have 350 people in this club when this happened. So we're thankful because of that. Yeah, a lot to be thankful there for. Uh, the mayor is thanking all of the firefighters who helped to put out that fire. He says his plan is to rebuild in hopes to have Joe's up and running again soon. Let's go to St. Landry Parish, where a resolution from the parish council could be going before a judge. News 10 Zane Hope just spoke to parish president Jesse Bellard, who says the resolution for independent investigators has violated the parish charter. St. Landry Parish President Jesse Bellard is prepared to go to court against the parish council, saying a resolution published by the council violated the parish charter. In March, Bellard was accused of wrongful termination of multiple government employees, accusations that Bellard says are false. With these accusations, the parish council published a resolution allowing the council to hire independent investigators to determine if an employee's termination was justified. So we're not disputing that a council can hire for an investigation. What the charter requires is that the council, if they so choose to do this, they put it in writing, but it has to be specific. What investigation, what employee, what is the issue that you want to investigate? Along with hiring investigators, Bellard says the council has also attempted to access the personnel files of employees where records of their information and reason for termination are kept. They want to see personnel files. They want to see things and stuff that they're not supposed to see. Those files are protected under the Fourth Amendment. And, and we want to make sure that people of our parish know that if you do come work for parish government, that your personnel information is safe with us. 
regardless of what two of the council members wants to do. Bellard says issues similar to this occurred while former parish president Bill Fontenot was in office, ending up in multiple court hearings Fontenot would ultimately win. Bellard has already hired an attorney and said he's willing to go before a judge if it means maintaining the integrity of his position and the parish charter. We got to keep this integrity of this book. We got to keep the integrity of this office. So it's not about me fighting the council. It's not, I'm not fighting the council. We get along fine. It's all politics and I'm good with that. Play the games, I'll play the games with you. I have an obligation to this office. My obligation is to uphold the respect of this office. A special meeting will be held tonight to find out if the parish council will be bringing in an attorney. If so, Bellard says he's prepared to be in court on Monday morning. In St. Landry Parish, I'm Zane Hogue for KLFY News 10. Then in response to the school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, one of Abbeville's council members held a discussion last week to look up possible actions to protect schools in Vermilion Parish in case of a school shooting. Councilman Francis Touche Jr. says he does not want to wait until something terrible happens at a Vermilion Parish school to take action. He says he wants to ensure every school has a resource officer on campus to quickly respond if a shooting happens. Vermilion Parish Superintendent Tommy Byler says they're putting in safety measures, but there is no one willing to be a permanent resource officer for Abbeville High School. The councilman says there should be no price too costly to protect the children. My question is, are we going to continue to think that this is not going to happen in Abbeville? Because no one thought it happened at that private school in Tennessee. And their doors were locked. Yeah, crazy there. Abbeville Police Chief Mike Hardy says he is open to talking about school safety with the council or the school administration. The council is suggesting the chief bring a proposal to the next scheduled council meeting there. The luminous shrimping industry seems to be moving in the right direction after Congressman Clay Higgins requested an increase in price and tougher inspections on imported shrimp. Once again, Here's News 10's Dawson D'Amico taking us to the heart of a shrimping country where this move makes the greatest impact. Out here in Delco, shrimpers have felt the impact of what the industry has become. Now, I spoke with one shrimper who says he's glad there are people in office helping represent and looking to revive one of the largest industries in the entire country. I support uh, Higgins. Uh, he was from when he first started, you know, and uh, he's been a good man, I think, for us in Washington. And whatever he can do for us, we appreciate. On April 4th, Louisiana Congressman Clay Higgins sent a letter to the Food and Drug Administration requesting stricter inspections on shrimp imports following recent reports of a virus known as white spot syndrome virus found in frozen shrimp from India. This virus can be very contagious and can potentially leave a severely negative impact on the industry. Captain Joseph Sauce Jr. has been shrimping for decades and believes Congressman Higgins' approach to the issue allows for a level playing field to combat imports for local shrimpers. It'd be a good idea to check that stuff good because we got strict laws here. When you go across state lines, uh, everything got to meet certain high specs. Why shouldn't foreign shrimp meet them same specs? Captain Sauce says he wants changes to be made as soon as possible for the sake of the industry he has been a part of his whole life. I've been in this a long time, uh, 50 years at least, and uh, it's had its ups and its downs, but this is the worst I've seen it in my lifetime right now. Captain Sauce says it will take a lot of work, but he hopes the industry will be revived and bring it back to what it once was. In Delcom, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY News 10. All right, so let's take a look at